In this video what I want to look at is the sphere dome light. There is a cube dome light as well. You can see it next to it on the create shelf and they're by and large very similar apart from the obvious difference being one's based on a sphere and the other's based on a cube. So if I cover the sphere dome light you should be able to work out what minor differences there are going to be if you used a cube instead. So to uh, to show how the light works we're going to have to fiddle around with the lighting setup in our scene so first of all I'm going to create a standard torus to be something to light and I'll create a sphere dome light that's just appeared above the torus and I'm just going to enlarge it in a sort of random way around it so you can see it's providing a little bit of light but it's not really clear what's going on so I'm going to go into sky and fog turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black go into the sky lab and disable the sunlight. At this point I'll draw your attention to this control which is the global shadow intensity control not just for the sun and moon as it's marked here and so I would recommend under most circumstances leaving this value at 100 because otherwise light is allowed to pass through solid objects. If you want to create more sophisticated lighting effects it's better to do it by introducing more light sources than it is by letting the existing light sources shine through solid objects. Okay, right, if we go back to our scene now then, and I successfully set my atmosphere to fully black and give it a render, we have only now in the scene the influence of these light sources that we've introduced. Now I say light sources even though it was one light, because this light source acts as multiple light sources, uh, in much the same way that image-based lighting produces additional light sources, so does this. So if I go into the light lab, we have some additional controls that are now active. So if I set it to uh, render in scene and increase the output a bit, you can see there's some hot spots on the ground. And to show you the action of this light, what I'm going to do is expose the entire sphere so we can see all the light sources. But at the moment, I'll just draw your attention to these three controls here that uh, relate to the dome. So this is a dome light. Uh, this is a 3D light and this control relates to the 3D light fill light so altering the distribution as far as I know doesn't make any difference to uh, to the effect on this so don't worry about that control focus on this one so I've got outward inward and self shadows at the moment outward and inward are engaged if you click on that it disengages it and now you can see it only lights inside the light object uh, this one works in the other way around so that should be fairly obvious don't turn them both off you get no light output at all and there's also self shadows which means that the surface the sphere that represents the dome light is actually casting shadows now so that creates some peculiar clipping don't worry about that it's not really that important so you've got these three controls and that's the default state you also have the option to turn them to distant lights at this point if you click this button you'll notice that it gets a lot brighter and the fall off switches from linear to none so uh, you'd need lower values to work with this and what's happening here it's as if you'd taken your dome and enlarged it to infinite size and so each uh, light on the dome was now providing a, a light source like like the sun so that there's, there's no fall off and it, it lights lights evenly from an infinite distance so you wouldn't expect to see any uh, tapering in the shadows as a result of that so you you would you would only get like parallel shadows because the light sources are trapped as being so far away. So I'll just disengage distant, just click on that and switch it back to linear and turn my output up again so you can see a bit of output. Now to explain these controls well, what I thought I would do was create an object that this light source can light and show where the individual light sources are being generated on the surface of this object. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste my light source and go to edit and convert it to a sphere and then just shrink that sphere very slightly not too much so its surface doesn't coincide exactly with the light source now that would have been generated in default gray and you can see now we've got some hot spots on the outside and this is because there have been light sources generated on the surface of the light source object and this sphere is picking them up now unfortunately we can't see through the sphere at the moment so what I thought I would do is set the ground and this sphere together to a material that allows us to see through it so I'll make it transparent and then I'll just get rid of its uh, shadow casting and receiving and self shadowing abilities 
so that they don't interfere. And now when I check out, we should be able to see it's really well lit because obviously if a light source is being uh, generated on the surface of the sphere here, it's shining out and lighting up the other parts of it, particularly now it's transparent. So what I can do is edit the light source, so I'll find my light source in here, dome light, edit it and put a gradient on it so it has a dramatic fall off in its output uh, as soon as it leaves the surface. And this should allow us to expose, oh well you can see it here, the spots on the surface of the individual light source. So if I turn these down a little bit so they become individual uh, then I can show you now. These are the, the light sources that have been generated on the surface. This is where they're clipping the ground plane and there's our torus in the middle not being very brightly lit because of the fall off there. So I'll edit this now we can preview it in this view and I can show you that as you increase the quantity the number of light sources on the surface goes up uh, and their brightness is dimmed accordingly so I'll just uh, so that the amount of light arriving on the ground is more or less the same even though you're increasing the number so that's that's why I keep turning this up so you can see the spots on the surface in this view so right, so it's, it's similar to using uh, image-based lighting where you're increasing the quality but in this case the light sources are much closer to well our subject in in this case because of the size of the sphere that I've put them on right so what does bias do bias shifts the light sources either up towards the top of the light object so there you go you can see they've gone up or down towards the underside if you go negative you can see that they're pooling there along the base. So if I, if I take it down like this and give it a quick render you'll get a better view of what's going on. So multiple light sources and the bias has pushed them down so that they're towards the bottom of the sphere that holds the light sources. Uh, I'll just edit that again. So right, so that's bias which is it's quite apparent when you can see the light sources but a bit mysterious otherwise. I'll set that back to zero. We've got randomness. Well randomness does what it says, it moves the light source around but it also, and this is why I've left the ground plane in, can move them away from the surface of the light sphere. So these light sources, now the spots look different sizes because they're no longer pinned to the surface of the light object, they're starting to move into and out of the surface. So they're, uh, they're no longer constrained and the, and the ground will see, you can see some of them moving out quite away. So that explains randomness. And in fact, that explains really most of the properties that we need to look at to make this light source work for us. Uh, the only thing I will point out is the problem with the hot spots. So if you were lighting, say, this torus inside a room, so you, you wanted this object inside the room, if you have objects in the room, the the light can clip the objects and you get these bright spots depending how they're set up. So the gradient control could be your solution to this particular problem. So if we, we want to edit the gradient, there's a button here to do it, uh, you could create a situation where if we add another spot for example, the output right at the light source which is on the left hand side here can be fully black and then you can have a gradient so that it gets brighter and then fades away or just stays bright and falls off naturally. So in this case if we do this now we're in a position where it's it's uh, reduced the effect of the hot spots by making them dim where the light first starts out. So it's created that sort of hexagonal effect there which is interesting. Maybe not very useful but interesting. So if we go back to a situation where we've got more output it's linear by modifying this gradient here where the, where the light's getting put out, you could, in fact, we could get rid of this spot here. Let's say we do that and then control the gradient so its output is a bit high there now. Let's sort of take it down to a more reasonable level for linear. It's such that if I get rid of this uh, sphere that's now showing the light sources, the, the hot spots on the ground are no longer visible. So I'll take this plane and reset it to default gray so we're back in a, a lighting situation. Right, there we go and then I'll just increase the light output a bit so we can see what's going off and the aim here even though we'll take the quality down is to try and reduce the the number of hotspots so you've got this control here that allows you to change the gradient 
somewhat so you can make it quite dark where the light sources are and and that way reduce the effect of the hot spots so if we go back here and just show you that turn the gradient back to uniform we get these hot spots so it's just just a way of uh, ensuring that even though you're putting simulated light sources in, in the air essentially in your scene you can uh, you can set the gradient up and if you if you get it right for the scale of your scene so let's try and get this scale this correctly you can you can more or less even with a low number of light sources hide their existence in 3d space so uh, oh that's gone i've gone for 10 minutes crikey so there you go that is a fairly swift rundown fairly swift of the uh, dome light i shall cover the uh, 3d fill light at some point as well and uh, i'll just point out that with the distant light settings as i was saying you still these uh, bias options still function so if i set this up here so i've got a reasonable level of output on the distant light of 20 uh, then if you take the the bias up then you'll get uh, the shadows falling because it'll it'll be like that it's above there'll be more light above so eventually you'll be in a situation where it's falling from almost directly above because of the position of the light source and the shadows are falling on the ground so you could create like uh, an easy way of creating a, a softer light I don't know whether if I turn this round it should rotate the oh that's a good question is that rotating the the light sources or the light sources stuck to the origin okay right maybe you've seen enough but I'm just gonna do a little more test now so I'll copy this turn it back into a sphere select the ground modify the material so where were we as I did it before turn off I'm curious now this is something I didn't test I mean don't use these light sources a lot but the question came up so I thought I'll try and answer it and uh, I don't know the answer to this part of the question so if I just go back to non-distant uh, linear uniform a gradient I want the ordinary gradient don't I so I want to swap this round so that it's creating my hot spots how do I do this I haven't used this control very much either right okay so we're back in a position where we've got our hot spots I just want those to be if, if I use squared it to be even more intense the effect I've turned distance off haven't I oh yes yeah, so the sphere needs to be slightly smaller than my light source otherwise the surfaces are coincident and you don't see very much okay right so this is if I rotate the light source are these spots that you can see here and in the preview going to stay at the top or are they going to rotate with the light source they rotate with the light source that's that's good that's a good thing so if I put them right on this side here so it's right on its side and then edit this and make it so that we've got uh, an extreme bias towards the top so I've got one hot spot I don't need to random just to be very random so an extreme hot spot at one end switch it to a distant light it's all arriving from that direction so I would expect that the shadows would squirt across to the right I just get rid of the gradient lower the output to something reasonable what was 20 was working for me before and then it's still very bright isn't it let's try 15 I'm trying to get to a situation where we can actually see what's going on with the shadows on the surface there and it's lighting from the top now so when it's distant ah when it's distant no I thought it was <laughs> I thought that was going to control it then it, it switches back to vertical orientation oh, that's interesting not very helpful in our case but interesting nevertheless so unless there's some way to force it to move around I could use the the um, animation thing to control the bug with the distant one in the other video that I did you can pin that in place so it stops snapping back but uh, no so if you switch it to distance the light source switches to above can't do anything about that it seems I'll, I'll investigate that still further and see whether there is a solution you notice how that snapped back to directly above so it's not controlling the this but the orientation when it's turned round when to disable that now when we rotate the sphere that moves round so there you go discovered another bug and showed you the feature that is I can't remember it's the dome light isn't it right okay then that's the end of the video I think I've gone on enough now cheers